worship the Lord this evening. We thank you. in this place. Amen. We serve a faithful God. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many have come to worship God tonight? Amen. There's no other place I'd rather be than in the house of God. Amen. God's here with us this evening. God's going to move and minister. Before we get into the service, we do want to pray for a number of needs in our church. We do want to pray for miracle healing for these needs. Amen. Pray for Shazad. For Sister Zenefa, Salima, Gopal, Annie, Iona, Shanice, we want to pray for Mr. Sibalak and Davy, as well as Sunita. Um, Alfonso Acosta need a miracle. And also we want to pray for Alex's father and Mr. Mohammed. We do want to pray as well for uh, Terrell, who was involved in an accident. Uh, some of you do know him. He is home. He is recovering, but he does have some back pain, some pain in his neck and face. So we do want to pray for him, for God to do a speedy miracle upon his body. We do want to pray as well for Anthony, that God would see his need, that God would give him favor and move in a miracle over his situation. We do want to pray for a number of churches, amen, in our fellowship. Pray for Miguel and Natalie Pena as they're ministering the gospel in Mahunga, Madagascar. Also, we want to pray for the Louisiana church, for uh, Pastor there and also we want to pray for my mother church pastor lamb pastor looney and also for pastor smart and for the church there in las vegas nevada amen we have many needs to bring before the lord but we serve a faithful god and he's going to move and minister maybe you have a need tonight you would like to signify with an uplifted hand amen god sees your need we're going to call upon the name of the lord together our brother rishi is going to open this service in a word of prayer, but before he does, let's cry out to God in this place this evening. God, we thank you. Lord, for your wonderful grace and your mercy, God, we lift up our voice together, God, in unity. God, we pray, O oh Lord, that your spirit, O oh God, would dwell within our hearts. And as we are here in this place tonight, God, we pray for an outpouring of your spirit and presence. God, we pray for those that are watching online, God, that you would see them where they are, God, and minister to them. God, I pray that you would move in miracles of healing tonight, God. God, that you would set free those that are bound in oppression and depression, God. God, we pray that you would set people free of inherited curses, oh God. God, that you would move in miracles in this place, in our church, and throughout our fellowship. God, we desperately need you, O oh God, for revival to continue to spread, O oh Lord, in this church and in our lives, O oh God. God, that we would be the people of God that you desire us to be in these last days, God. We know, God, that there is a work, God, that is lurking in the darkness. And I pray, O oh God, for every saint of God to strap on the sword of spirit. God, I pray that we would draw close to you in prayer and in worship and surrender. God, we are praying, O oh Lord, that you would see every need, spoken and unspoken, move in salvation and in healing, O oh God. Touch every need, O oh God, by your spirit, I pray in the mighty name. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace this Amen. evening. Lord, thanking you, O oh Father, for all that you have done and yet to do, O oh God. Father, as we stand, O oh God, as you are in the midst of us this evening, O oh God, as we stand in your throne of grace, O oh God. O oh Lord, I call upon your name, O oh Father. O oh Lord, I pray against right now, God, every strategy, Lord, of Satan and hell, O oh God, for the devil is a liar this evening, O oh God, and then the de deceiver, O oh God, with his cunning ways, O oh God. Father, by the blood of Jesus, O oh God, O oh God, your people, O oh God, will understand and know the truth this evening, O oh God, for your word Word is the truth, O oh God. Oh Lord, we will come against, O oh God, all the lies from hell, O oh God. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, I pray, God, your grace, O oh God, upon your people, O oh Father. Lord, I pray, God, right now, Lord, Father, for those who need healing in their body, O oh God. Oh Lord, I call upon the blood of Jesus over them, O oh God. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you may touch every need, O oh God, as is brought before you, every petition, O oh Father. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will meet these needs, O oh God. For we know, O oh Lord, that you are a just God, O oh God, and you are the faithful, O oh God, and a 
true God, O oh God. For whoever you say is the truth, O oh Lord. And we know, God, that you're the same God yesterday, you're the same God today, and you're the same God tomorrow, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, God, for our pastor this evening, O oh Father. As you bring forth your word to your people, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, that you may hide them behind the cross this evening, O oh Father. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, let every word that proceeds this evening, O oh God, O oh Lord, be of you, O oh God. Let it edify us, O oh God. O oh, let it bring, O oh God, a vision, O oh God. O oh, let it bring, O oh God, rectification, Father, right now, God. Oh, let us not be deceived, oh God, by the lie, oh God, by the seed that Satan may have been planted, oh God, into our hearts this evening, oh God. For your word, oh God, is the truth, oh God. Oh Lord, as we read, oh God, as we listen this evening, oh God, Lord, may we ponder, Lord, on every word, oh God, that will be spoken, oh God, for we know, God, that your word will be anointed, oh God. Oh Lord, I pray, God, anoint our pastor this evening as you bring forth this word, oh Father, to your soul, God. Lord, I give you thanks, I give you praise, oh Father, for all that you have done and yet to do lord in no other name but the mighty name of jesus amen and amen amen let's turn and greet one another this evening Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. We are glad you're here in the house of God this evening. For those watching online, thank God you're here as well. Amen. Before we get into this service, we do want to let you know just a few announcements, some things going on here at the church to keep you posted on. Um, as you know, actually, Monday, Tuesday, we joined with the Curep congregation. We went over there for the revival with Pastor Desmond. Uh, amen. It was a wonderful time. Both services were very powerful, ministered directly on point. Amen. So if you didn't miss that, I did send out the link. I strongly encourage you to go and watch it online on, on live stream. Amen. And you will be greatly blessed. Amen. They are having a fellowship tonight. They're having their last revival service. Uh, they, they said that they're cooking roti, and I can smell it, I believe, in the air. Amen. That was an ongoing joke from Pastor Ayo. Uh, but amen. It's very exciting to see what God is doing. Amen. Joseph, his wife, uh, they are about to be launched out. I believe they're going to be laying hands on them, praying for them, and sending them out this service this evening. Amen. Into Valencia, Trinidad, they're going to be starting a brand new church. So we're very happy to see what God is doing. 
Amen. But that, that's the start of what God wants to do. God has so much in store for this island, for this nation, and God's going to continue to raise up men that will say, you know what, I want to be here. I want to raise up other men. I want to see nations touched. I want to see people changed, lives changed and transformed. So let's continue to pray for this contending, believing God for supernatural miracles in this nation. Uh, do want to let you know, uh, this Saturday we will have an outreach that begins 11 o'clock in the morning, but the church will be open at 10 laying a hold of God, finding a place to pray, and then directly at 11, we'll be going into the streets and witnessing, evangelizing, winning souls for Christ. Amen to all the fathers. Amen also to sons, daughters. It is Mother's Day this Sunday. Just warning you. You don't want to vex mom, do you? <laughs> Amen. It is Mother's Day, so be aware of that. We are going to have a special service for Mother's Day. And then also Monday, the 9th, we will be having our corporate prayer and fasting. This is a whole day of fasting, laying a hold of God. And then in the evening at 7 o'clock, we will be here at the church praying, laying a hold of God, believing God for supernatural things for the rest of the month. Amen. And the rest of the year, believing God for fruit that would remain in our congregation. So take note of that. And then also the 21st, looking ahead, this is going to be on a Saturday. We have on the calendar a baptism, and we're going to be going to uh, Maracas Beach. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So the plan is to rent a vehicle, and in that vehicle, a, a huge bus that's going to take the majority of the church um, up there. It's going to be at 11 in the morning until about 2.30 three o'clock. We're going to be eating, fellowshipping, having a baptism. Amen. So we do want to encourage all the new converts. A lot of new people have come just this past month through all the evangelism. We want to encourage them to get baptized and be a part of this. And we also want to invest in their life and have this time of investment and believe God that he will continue to build his church. Amen. So that's all the announcements that I do have at this time. But Feel free uh, to look on the back bulletin board, to look at the calendar there. Amen. Let's uh, worship God together as the usher comes this evening. God, we thank you that we can get into your kingdom tonight. God, I pray your blessing. Amen. We want to receive this evening's tithes and offerings besides, and we want to remain faithful, for God is always faithful to supply our every need. The Bible tells us in Malachi chapter 3, 8 through 12, it asks this question, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and in offerings. You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now. In this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will, re will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that you will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed for you will be a delight, uh, will be delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. As we look at this text tonight, here is God, there is a challenge that is given to his people, and he brings it to the forefront of their mind. He says, listen, there's a problem here that needs to be addressed. God asks his people the question, will a man rob God? I ask you that question, will a man rob God? Me? Nah. Right? They're asked this question, will a man rob God? In our mind, we're thinking, who in their right mind would rob God? Right? That is not wise. That would not be a good idea because God is God. Amen. God brings it to their attention. In what way you have said this? And he tells them in tithes and on offerings. You know, I look back 
at these opportunities of giving tithes and offerings besides. And I wish I can stand here and say, you know what? Every time I gave, every time, every time. As a disciple, I struggled with this. Many times in the mother church being raised, of course I heard the necessity of giving. Of course I heard there is a great blessing that you will receive when you remain faithful in your giving. I heard it all. But when it came to actually applying it to my life, I struggled. Because there were times I would get my paycheck and I would look at how much I made. I would look at my bills and then tithe an offering on top of it. And I would say there is no way I can afford tithing and giving God an offering. Battled with it. Battled with it. Battled with it. Now I want you to know there were many struggles that I went through. Because I had to learn the very hard lesson that if you rob God, if you don't give God what is due to him, you are putting a curse on your life. I'm going to repeat that. If you do not give God what belongs to him, tithes and offerings, this is what the word of God says tonight. You are cursed with a curse. Now, if I asked you tonight, who wants to be cursed? Not a hand would go up. Pastor Io, during the past two nights of revival, he says, how many hands you, do I want to see? You want to be blessed, right? Every hand went up. And that is the truth, beloved. We don't want to curse on our life. If you don't want to curse on your life, give to God. Amen. Give to God every time. When your income comes in, you get your paycheck. Before anything else, I'm giving to God. 10%. What is 10%? If you make $100, it's $10, 10%. If you make $1,000 in a week or two weeks, it's $100. How many are following me? It's very easy to pull out your cal a calculator and type it in there and then put the percentage and it would be able to tell you how much your tithe would be. If you don't have a, a, an understanding in this, you could come up to me and I'd gladly help you go to another brother in the church. They'll gladly help you in this, because what I want to see for God's people and his church is God's blessing to be on our resources. Amen. If we want to plant churches one day, we have to get this vision. We have to gain this understanding. Whatever comes in, I'm giving to God. Whatever comes in. Not just that, but I'm going to go above and beyond, and I'm also going to give an offering. What is offering? It's a reflection of our heart. What is offering? It's a trust. It's a confidence knowing, listen, I am going to give above and beyond because I greatly need God's blessing upon my life and resources. It's very evident in the word of God. It's, it's not me tonight. This is the word of God. It's very evident what he will do for those who will remain faithful in this. It says, test me. Try me. Amen. You remember hearing those words from your parents? I, I heard those words, right? Normally, when I was testing them, try me. You know you're getting licks when you hear that. Try me not. God says, try me. Try me. Ooh. Ooh. Try me. That I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out such blessing upon your life. Don't let the devil rob you tonight. Don't rob God. Give what belongs to him this evening. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Let's ask God's blessing upon this time as we give unto him. Rishi, if you could lift your voice. Amen. God bless you as you give tonight.
We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all that might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all that might see the truth and know He is the way to Amen. Thank you, musicians, those on the platform. God bless you tonight in your ministry. If you have your Bibles, if you could please turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Mark, chapter 16. Mark 16. We're going to be reading there together. Amen. During this revival, you know, just... It was amazing to see what God was doing in his church and for his people. And during this revival, I have been praying and and seeking God what to do. What's the next steps going forward? What what needs to happen? Amen. And that's a good thing to be in a place where you are desperate, where you are searching for God. Amen. So during this revival, you know, God dropped in my heart and in my spirit that we get together on Wednesdays, and that we really push and contend for miracles. I understand that this is a kind of popular thing here in Trinidad. Many of the churches that you drive, they have healing and deliverance services on Wednesdays, right? So there is an expectation. There is almost built into the hearts of people here, you know what, Wednesday, if you need a miracle, if you need deliverance, show up, right? So with this, we are praying, we are contending that God would bring people here by his spirit. Because I truly believe, as we know, there are many people, they are bound in addiction. They are bound by generational curses. We know in this nation that there are many people that are hurting still from this past two years of COVID. They have lost loved ones or they are suffering with ongoing illness due to having COVID. And what we want to do is believe God for miracles. Oh, did I lose everybody already? We want to believe God for miracles. Amen. And I believe this spirit and attitude that we have for others, God will see our need and he will meet our need. I tell you that for this reason, before leaving here uh, to come here to Trinidad uh, in Las Vegas, as you heard my testimony, I broke my ankle at work and it was horrible. I, I, I don't wish that on anybody. And during that time, you know, it was a lot of pain and I also struggled for a period of time in depression, you know, just, you know, using crutches, having to go upstairs and all of these things that I started getting in this mood and mindset, and it was demonic. It was a demonic strategy. And I remember overcoming this, but during that time, it still hurt. Even though I was back to work, carrying on in my life, there were times where I would feel the pain. I'm a basketball player. I love playing basketball. You know, being on the court, being able to run around and and be active, I still felt it. And I remember pastor, he he addressed us and said, listen, there's a need in Trinidad. Would you be able to go? Yes, we'll go. And still the pain was there. And I remember coming here to Trinidad and shortly after coming here to Trinidad, the pain left gone. I, I mean, I was searching for it. I was sprinting, running. Where is the pain? It's not there. Why is that? Because of the willingness to put others' needs before my own. Mark that down. When you develop this mindset and attitude, I need to serve others before myself. God will see your need and meet your need. Amen. What we're going to read here tonight in our text is after the death of Jesus, he's actually now uh, raised. He is alive. He is risen from the dead. And as we know, these disciples had fled. They left. 
They went to their place of comfort. They went back to friends and family. Some were scared, you know what, whatever happened to Jesus, if I associate myself, it's going to happen to me. So they're gone. They disappeared. But what Jesus did was he began to meet them personally. He'd go visit these two. He'd go over here. He'd go over there, minister to them, draw them back on track. But everything that Jesus did for, was for a reason and for a purpose. Because Jesus' ministry did not stop with him. It still carries on today in the lives of ordinary men and women. God wants to use you to reach others. I want to preach a message I've entitled, Belief Affects How You Live. And I want to begin reading in Mark 16, 12 through 18. It says these words. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest. But they did not believe them either. Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly... It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Let's pray this evening. God, we thank you for this time together that we can gather in your house. God, we don't take this opportunity lightly. We know, God, that you are here, that you long to minister into the hearts of your people. God, I pray for those that are here and joining online. I pray against every distraction, every spirit of doubt and unbelief that would creep, uh, creep into our heart and mind, O oh God, and cause us, O oh Lord, to miss out on a miracle from you. God, I am praying that you would move in miracles this evening of healing, O oh God, and salvation. God, I pray that you would set your people free, God, even now, minister through your word. And as we gather here in this place this evening, I pray that you would be with us, overshadow and protect us in this place this evening. We pray, oh God, your spirit to have right away, God, in this service. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Let's first look at the ongoing battle with belief. There is an ongoing battle, amen. Belief, just as I mentioned in the sermon title, affects how we live because daily we make decisions based on belief. You jump into the maxi or taxi, right? That is comfortable. You jump into that ride. You jump into that uh, uh, person's vehicle because you know, hey, they, they can drive. They can get me from point A to point B. To point B. There are some that are afraid of elevators, but there are also others that have no problem getting into an elevator, pushing up and down, right? Because they believe it's going to bring them to where they want. These individuals in our text, they chose unbelief. In verse 13 of our text, it says this, and they went and told the rest, but they did not believe them either. Isn't that interesting? Because all these disciples were together at one point. All of them were on the same vision, the same mindset. They're all following Jesus. They saw the miracles. They witnessed it firsthand. But they chose not to believe. These two disciples, right? They come to a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus, right? Shocking. They witness he's dead. He's gone. He's kaput. But now he's alive. Jesus comes, he ministers to them, so much so that they said, listen, we can't stay here by ourselves. We need to tell people 
right? Which is a great sign of genuine conversion. Man, we need to go back and tell people, listen, he's alive. Let's get about the Father's business. Let's be busy about this work that he has laid before us. Belief and unbelief both change how you live. See, for these disciples, they chose unbelief. And what happened to them? Right? They, they started to disperse, didn't they? Started going back to other places. It says in Mark 14, 50, as Jesus is there, he is, uh, uh, they're about to take him. It says this, then they all forsook him and fled. They said, nah, boy, not us. We're gone. We're out of here. They chose unbelief. Listen to me tonight. Unbelief can cloud your judgment. It can be the truth. You know it's the truth. But because of that unbelief, it clouds your judgment. You start making horrible decisions. You start going down horrible paths. You know, there are some mentally, it begins to torment their mind. They can become depressed and filled with anxiety due to this uh, plaguing unbelief in their mind. There are people that believe wholeheartedly in their belief, in their unbelief. There are people that would say words like, my spouse will never change. My situation will never change. The things that are around me will never change. We have to be careful with the words that we choose. Even when it comes to our relationship with God, there are pe people that believe, you know what? I've got it figured out. There is no God. And they're dead set. There's no changing their uh, uh, belief and they have it completely wrong there are some people that would say you know what uh, yeah Jesus yeah I know Jesus he was a good teacher he was a good prophet you know what he was a motivational speaker he was good but when it comes to being God nah he's not God you know Jesus he went to his hometown he had a heart for people, went to his hometown, was excited to be there. But what happened? We look at Matthew 13, 58 in the NLT. It says this. And so he only can do a few miracles because of their unbelief. Isn't that interesting? We have to be very careful with the words that we allow in our situations because they can be either life or death. We also find this story in the word of God in Mark 5, 35 through 42. It says this. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard these words, he spoke. He said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and Peter, the, son, uh, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogues and saw a tumult. And those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said, why make these co this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But he had put them all outside. He took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lay laying. Then he took the child by hand and said to her, Talitha Kumai, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately, the girl arose and walked and she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. Look at this story that Jesus gives us. Here is a need. Here is a girl, 12 years old, 
For the natural eye, she is dead. She is gone. There are people approaching the Father saying, listen, don't bring Jesus anymore. It's over. Accept it. Jesus heard the words and said, listen, no, believe. There are people that were following. They are naysayers, right? What did Jesus do? He started cutting away. He said, no, hey, disciples, come. Come not. Follow me. So they're moving. They're moving. Now they come to the place where this girl is. There's already mourners there. These are professionals. They're crying. They're wearing the garments. They have the handkerchiefs. <laughs> Snot is everywhere, right? They're crying. And Jesus is looking at this. You have to put yourself in that situation. It would be rough, right? You are there. Many people are already saying, I'm sorry for your loss. You know what? She's in a better place now. You know what? Don't worry about it. I'm here for you if you need it. Right? They're accepting it. Jesus steps to the scene. She's asleep. She is not dead. She is only asleep. Then he even further says, no, you got to go. Move. Move. Get out of here. Go. Go. What great faith. Brings the father and mother. You have to imagine the mother's emotions at that time. Jesus steps into the scene. Brings them aside. And then they witness this miracle. Little girl. Little girl. Wake up. Arise. We have to be very careful the words that we allow. Because there are family members that can look at our situation and they'd say, you know what, it's finished. Forget about it. Especially when it comes to marriages, which is a horrible decision if you get your parents involved in your marriage. You start witnessing and saying, what's going on? Your issues with your husband and wife. It's not wise. Because they're going to begin to speak words and say, you know what, you need to leave them. You know what? You, you, he's doing what? Right? They're going to begin to plant seeds of doubt, plant seeds of unbelief that are going to fester and eventually lead to disaster in your marriage. You have to judge it. This is exactly what Jesus did. He said, no, I am not going to accept this because there is still life here. Is it possible that the miracle that God wants to perform in your life tonight will not happen because of your unbelief? Is it possible? Because time and time again, Jesus addressed belief. Don't doubt, only believe. Because most people today, listen, we are human. And for us, it has to make sense. For most people, we need a logical explanation. In other words, it needs to make sense. Because if it does not make sense, they don't believe. For these disciples in our text, they've either witnessed what happened firsthand, or they heard of the brutal crucifixion of Christ. For them... Jesus is done. That's it. Right? Because once you're dead, you're dead. It's, that's it. So they're accepting this. When Jesus was alive and he began to speak, this must come to pass, they couldn't process it. We look in Mark 8, 31 through 32, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Jesus, come here. Come here. Come. 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 
Come on. This is Jesus. And he thinks he has it right. What is going on with this man? He couldn't process it. But Jesus already knew. He was 10 steps ahead. He knew what was going to take place. He knew what his purpose was in life. Here's a man who thought he had it all figured out. We must understand this evening is that we need to let God be God. Now, I'm going to give you a newsflash. I don't know everything. Pastor Io doesn't know everything. My pastor doesn't know everything. There are things, beloved, we just need to say, God, you are God, and only you know the outcome of this situation. Amen. Jesus' ministry focused on healing and deliverance. We look in 1 Corinthians 2, 4 through 5, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And your faith, your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We need the supernatural power of God. How many can say amen tonight? It's not going to come through our words, through our actions. It's not going to happen by our good looks and the way that we carry ourselves. Another word of the day is charisma. Ah, oh, that's a charismatic church. They've got it going on. Listen, it's going to happen by the power of God. We need God to move. Because Jesus is a miracle worker. There's a book called Miracle Healing. It's by T.L. Osborne. He says this. Miracles are not mysterious phenomena bestowed upon a select few, nor are they the occasional wonders performed by specifically gifted intermediaries. Miracles are the life of Jesus Christ being manifested in hurting and disenfranchised people. Here's the person that gets it. It's not by the man. It's not by the individual. It is the supernatural power of God. And what God longs for is to reveal himself to you and I. 1 Corinthians 4.20, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. You know, as we experienced this revival, it was refreshing to see what God was doing because God was moving powerfully. There were members in the church, they came with pain, and they left healed. There were members that came, they had back pain, they had short legs. Pastor Smart said, listen, we're going to believe God. You need to forgive, you need to pray. And in that moment, they were healed. Two of our members, I believe it was one member, they had a, a short leg on their right. And for the other, their left leg was short. And before come, uh, telling them, hey, sit down, let's look at your legs and find out, he says, you know what, your right leg is short. You, your left leg is short. Now, how did he know that? Did he say, hey, um, do you have anything strange going on? Do you feel like you're kind of walking with a lean a little bit? Did he have them fill out a questionnaire before the service? No. It was the Spirit of God ministry. Speaking in those moments, you know what? This person has this going on. And when he stepped down in faith and he called them out, they received a miracle. And still to this day, they're healed. Stefan, amen? <laughs> Praise God. Came with pain. Left healed. There are people that wonder about revivals and healing crusades. They say, you know what, that's all staged. There's people, you know, they're paid actors and actresses. They come, they fake like they're fainting. 
right? They're being slain. And this, you know what? There are people that come. They say, oh, yeah, they've had this back pain. Oh, you know the real good ones is when they come up in a wheelchair. They've been there all their life. They tell you the story, but you know what? They're faking it. They can walk. I know they can walk. Pastor Desmond, he was just preaching on this. He, he looks at Pastor Mitchell. Pastor Mitchell's legit. He prays with people. They're healed. They're delivered. There's no debating it. But when you have a guest pastor come, oh, watch him. He's pulling his leg. You know what? His shoe came off. He pulled his shoe to make it look even. Right? We can be cynical. There are some people that would say, you know what, pastor, I know you told him something about me. That's why he spoke those words that he spoke. You know what? I, I know it. Come on. I've, I've heard it and I felt it myself. Pastor, what did you say about me? But what is that? That's the supernatural power of God. Everyone that was here during this revival can testify. There was a liberty in this church, in this building. Everybody came expecting. Everybody came willing. Listen, God, speak to me. God, show things to me. God moved. You know, during the revival that it kept increasing, the most people that we had in here was on Monday, no, Tuesday night, 61 people here. And guess what? Monday we had 54. That was with Curep. But Wednesday, it was just our church. And guess how many were here? 54 people. Amen. Everybody came expecting. And when you come expecting, God will show up. God will move. I'm telling you, God has not finished what he wants to do in this church. We have to continue to be faithful because we serve a God who is all so faithful. I ask you tonight, what is your need? What is the pain that you have in your body? What is it that you are going through in your relationships, your upbringing? Maybe you feel like you're under a generational curse. Maybe you feel, you know what, somebody put a curse over me. I can't function. I can't do certain things that I want to do. I cannot think straight. What is it that you are in need? Because I'm here to tell you that God sees your need and he wants to perform a miracle in your life if you would just believe. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes for just a moment. Have faith. I'm here to tell you, listen, I believe wholeheartedly. I believe wholeheartedly that God can move in and through your life. But do you believe? That's what it comes down to. If you believe, God will move. What is your need tonight? What is it that you are going through in life that you would like to see change? Believe Jesus. I've experienced miracles, beloved. I have witnessed them firsthand and know that God can move through your life. But before I begin to pray for people and believe God for miracles, there's one thing that I want to do beforehand is I want to give you an invitation. And that is to accept Christ. Maybe you're joining us tonight. You're not saved. You're not a Christian. You have not yet confessed your sin before the Lord. This is. This is number one priority. Because the Bible tells us that on the other side of this life is a next life. And it's actually eternal. It goes on forever. And Jesus told, tells us actually, that there is heaven, there is hell. There's no middle ground, there's no purgatory. Listen, there's heaven, there's hell. There's two places that we're going to go, either one. And your decision tonight is going to determine your eternal destination. If you're a Christian, if you believe, if you repent of your sin, heaven, heaven is your destination. But if you choose to unbelieve, say, you know what, I'll take my chances. You know what, I'm a good person. I, I don't really need this religious crutch right now. If you go on and say, you know what, I don't need that, you're actually rejecting the truth. And you're accepting 
hell. The decision is yours tonight. I'm not here to force it on you, but what I am here to do is to be the mouthpiece of God and to warn you. One day, you and I are going to stand before God, a righteous and a holy judge. The Bible tells us every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. One day, you can choose today to come to that realization. You can choose today. That way, when you do stand before God, you're going to hear the words, well done, that good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Do not wait until it's too late. The Bible tells us today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Don't say, well, I'm young now. I'll wait till I'm older. Make that decision now. There are people here tonight. You've tried life, haven't you? You've tried, you've tried, you've tried, and you're still searching. And you went through many sources, haven't you? But still, you're left wanting. You're still left searching. You need Jesus. You don't need religion. Religion will not save you. A relationship with Jesus Christ will change your life. And I'm wondering how many in this place you want to repent of your sin. You want to accept Christ into your life. Lift your hand very quickly all across this place. I'm not saved. Pastor, please pray for me. I need to get my heart right before God. I know if I die right now, I'm not going to make heaven my home. And I want to change that. I want to make heaven. Lift your hand very quickly. You're not saved. You're not a Christian. Maybe you're a backslider. You once prayed, you were once walking in the ways of God, but you've allowed sin back into your life. Backslider, lift your hand, let's pray. Get your heart right with the Lord. All across this place, joining online. How many would there be? I'm not saved, I'm not right with God. I need Jesus tonight. Amen. You're joining online, I want to lead you in a prayer. Maybe God has been ministering to you about your desperate need for God. I'm here to tell you God sees you right now. He sees your situation, what you are going through, and he wants to bring healing. Now, I want to pray with you. If you can just pray this prayer with me. Lift your hands, say, Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I confess my sin before you, and I leave it at an altar. And I pray for the blood of Jesus to wash over me, to make me a new creation. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed, I want you to reach out to me. The details are there in the link. But before we close this service, I'd ask the church to stand with me tonight. Let's all stand together. This is the heart of God. He wants to reveal himself to you and I. He does it in many ways, but one of those powerful ways is through miracles of healing. It is something. When you were here during the revival, you saw God begin to move in healing. It was encouraging, wasn't it? This is one way that God wants to reveal himself. He did it with his disciples. He took his disciples and said, everything you see me do, I want you to do now. Disciple. Everything you saw Pastor Smart do. Everything you saw your pastor do. Whether that be Pastor Brian, Pastor Mel, Pastor Oswald, whoever. God wants to use you to reach others. And I believe that there are disciples here tonight. You want to contend for this. You do feel, you know what, I want to pray for people. I want to step out in faith. I believe God spoke to people tonight. And what I want to do is open these altars. And I encourage the church, the saints of God, let's press in for miracles together. Amen. These altars are open. Come find a place to pray tonight. Amen. Let's call upon God together as we sing out this song. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Lord, we worship your holy name in this place tonight. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that you are able to use our lives to witness, God, to evangelize, to win souls for you. 
God, we step out in faith in this place tonight. God, we choose to believe. God, we cast out unbelief. God, we take dominion over every lying spirit, oh God. Devil, you are a liar. You've been defeated by the cross, by the blood of Jesus. Oh God, raise up a remnant. Raise up men and women in our congregation that would press through in faith. God, that would contend for miracles to take place. That would witness to friends and family and co-workers, God. That would see, oh God, grow around them. Oh God, we need you to move by your spirit and power. She God, I pray, oh Lord, seal these words tonight. God, touch your people at this altar. God, as we lay down our life before you, I pray, have your way. God, I pray for a fresh anointing. Fill the hearts and lives of your people with the Holy Spirit, oh God. Oh Lord, we need you. Move in revival in this nation and our church, oh God. God, we worship you. God, we praise your name. You are Lord of Lords and King of all kings. We worship you. She the name of Jesus. Demons flee by the blood of Jesus. We are free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. out this service I do want to pray for people but before I call on everyone to come specifically I want to pray for somebody right now you have a toothache right now you have pain in your tooth I want you to come forward let's pray amen Rajesh how long has this been hurting hardly noticed this morning okay and Rishi, this has been ongoing, that same tooth. Okay, on your left side. All right, you have tooth. Okay, is that a baby tooth? It's an adult tooth. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to pray for these. I believe God's going to move right now. And Mary. Okay, we'll wait for Mary. We'll wait for Mary. Amen. Also, Celine too. Oh, you're getting Celine? Okay. All right. All right. Um, also, somebody here, or whether you're joining online, you have pain in your ankle. In your ankle. Pain in your ankle. I believe this is for somebody online. And uh, Stefan, if you don't mind, if you can go back uh, to the YouTube link and just look. Because in the comments right now, if that's you, I want you to write down in those comments section and say that's you. And we're going to pray for you. You have pain in your ankle. Amen. So, Mary, which two? And how long has that been hurting? Since when? Since you got the flu. Okay. Was that recent or? Okay. All right. Well, we're going to pray. All right. You believe God? You believe God? Amen. Luke, you believe God? Amen. Let's lift our hands together, okay? And right now, church, if you can help me pray for these, just lift up your hands. Let's believe God together. Say, Dear Lord, right now, I come to you by the blood of Jesus. I speak healing upon my tooth. I command all pain, all discomfort 
to leave my body and never return. The blood of Jesus heals me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship God. Right now, I pray, God, for a miracle of healing. We command all pain to leave and never return. Right now, in Jesus' name, all pain to leave and never return. God, we believe in you, God, for miracles of healing. God, touch them right now by your spirit and grace. Hallelujah, God, we speak healing, resurrection, life. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. Amen. Your pain is gone. Lift your hand. Amen. Praise God. Rajesh. All pain to leave. You couldn't push it this morning, but now you can push. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can return to your seats tonight. This is what God wants to do. Amen. Disciple, this is what God wants to do through you. Listen, it, it's sometimes challenging because you think, what if I pray for somebody and the pain is still there? What's wrong with me, right? Don't let the devil lie to you. God wants to use you. You step out in faith, you go all the way and say, you know what? God's going to get the glory. I did not do that tonight. That was the supernatural power of God. Amen. Stefan, did you see anybody respond? Nobody responded. Amen. I believe it's somebody. And I'm going to give you a little bit more time. Amen. But now I want to open it up. If you have pain in your body, I want you to come forward. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Doesn't matter where it is in your body. You have pain right now. We're going to believe God together. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to pray for Carrie. And I want to pray for Mary as well. How are you feeling, not in your tooth, but headache and back pain? Okay, and Shannis as well. How are you feeling, Carrie? Okay, all right, we're going to pray. You believe God? Amen. And I know how big it is to be here, but I'm telling you that that is going to move the heart of God. You believe? You believe? Janice, we're going to pray and we're going to bind the devil. He's a liar, isn't he? Amen. And those words that were spoken to you throughout that week, hold on to them. Hold on to them for life. All right. So we're going to pray. Lift your hands with me. Say, dear Lord, I come to you by the blood of Jesus. I speak healing upon my body. I command all headaches, all body aches all fever to leave my body the blood of jesus heals me right now i bind every word spoken against my life i speak healing resurrection power in jesus name amen amen let's worship god right now i pray touch these by your spirit oh god bring healing right now all pain to leave Never return in Jesus' name. God, touch my sister. God, we command the fever to leave and never return. Devil, you are a liar. God, bring healing upon these. God, we thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. How does it feel? You had a headache? How does it feel? Still there. Still there. Janice? tension is it in the front part and how about you for mary on the top okay carrie you didn't did you have okay all right you can return back all right we're going to contend for these amen church help me pray for them we're going to believe god for all pain to leave doesn't matter where it is in your head it's going to leave tonight we're not going to accept it okay 
All right, let's lift our hands together again. Church, help me pray for these. God, right now, I bind every demonic strategy, every spirit of doubt and unbelief, God. We speak healing, resurrection, life upon these, oh God. We command all pain to leave. We bind every evil word spoken against their lives, oh God. We pray against witchcraft, evil sorcery, God. I pray send every curse back upon its source, oh God. Move in a miracle of healing upon their body. Touch them, oh God. God, move Move upon my sister, God. Touch your God by your favor and grace, oh God. We command all sickness, all pain and disease to leave in Jesus' name right now. We thank you and give you praise. Let's worship God together, church. Lord, we thank you, God, for the work that you are going to do. Oh, Lord, you are worthy of all praise. Amen. How is it feeling? Amen. Gone. Amen. Praise God. Shannis, you felt a release. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You guys can return back. Stefan, no? No ankle. Okay. If that is you, amen, you can see me after the service, or if that's you online as well, the details are on there, Stefan, the, the phone number. You can take a screenshot of that. Uh, just reach out to me. God wants to move in a miracle for you. You sat here. You watched the miracles take place. God wants to do the same for you. Amen. So as you heard me mention, every Wednesday, we're going to be con we're going to come together. We're going to believe God for this. So if you know people, co-workers, doesn't matter who it is, tell them, come, tell them, come be in the house of God. God wants to bring healing. Amen. Let's close in a word of prayer tonight. Travel home safely this evening. Amen. I'm wondering if Vic can lift his voice, close us in a word of prayer.